I'm gonna ask you folks a question. I want the chat to answer me this. Who owns JavaScript? Who owns JavaScript? Any folks tell me? Ding, ding, ding. We have the right answer right away. Oracle. Oracle owns JavaScript. No, not Google. <laughs> if, if it was Google, then it would have been a whole another... Yeah, I'm not gonna get there. It is... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Implementations of JavaScript could potentially be open source, but JavaScript is owned by Oracle. How is that possible? All right, here's the thing. This is something in, that was recently in the news, which is which is fascinating. Here's a letter. Here's a letter to Oracle from a bunch of people who are really big in the JavaScript space. Right. So this is Ryan Dahl, the creator of Node.js. Brennan Eich, who is the creator of JavaScript. There are a bunch of people who are the editors of the JavaScript spec, creators of NPM, bunch of syntax.fm. I don't know what syntax.fm is. So a lot of people who are big in the JavaScript space have written a letter to Oracle. Oracle, it's time to free JavaScript. Dear Oracle, you have long ago abandoned the JavaScript framework and it is causing widespread unwarranted confusion and disruption. JavaScript is the world's most popular programming language, powering websites everywhere. Is it the world's most popular programming language? I thought it was Python. Maybe it's the most widely executed programming language because like every browser uses JavaScript. I don't know, whatever their definition of most popular is. Yet, few of the millions who program in it realize that JavaScript is a trademark you Oracle control. The disconnect is glaring. JavaScript has become a general purpose term used by countless individuals and companies independent of any Oracle product. Oracle holds on to JavaScript trademark, clearly fits the legal definition of trademark abandonment. So trademark abandonment is when somebody holds on to a trademark and they don't use it. It's like you're not you're not supposed to hold on to the trademark. You're supposed to give it away because someone else can make better use of it, right? They're I think they're called trademark squatters or something like that. They just hold on to the trademark and they want somebody to give them money to hand off the trademark to the other person. Okay, so I'm not saying Oracle is doing this, but Oracle holding on to JavaScript and not doing anything with it is, according to them, fits the definition of trademark abandonment. There's a previous blog post for this as well, which is from Ryan Dahl, who is the creator of Node.js. Here is the history, right? This is why Oracle owns JavaScript, by the way. In 1995, Netscape partnered with Sun Microsystems to create interactive websites. This was a time when Java was popular and they had to this is the reason why JavaScript is called JavaScript, okay? This is a time when Java was popular and they had to create something for the web, kind of like Java applets. So they said, let's create a scripting language and we will call it something similar to Java. They called it Java script, okay? So because they wanted to kind of leverage the buzz that Java had in the news, okay? And because of that, because and of course, there's a famous fact at this time, Brendan spent 10 days to create the first version of JavaScript, which sucked by the way, and he continued to work on it. It's a myth that in 10 days, it, JavaScript was perfect, it wasn't. So JavaScript was created in 10 days, and it had roughly syntactic lineage from Sun's Java language. They wanted to make it similar to Java. So there's a lot of similarities there. As a result of this partnership, Sun held the trademark JavaScript. In 2009, Oracle acquired Sun Microsystems and they acquired the JavaScript trademark. Okay, trademark has no commercial value. Other than Oracle's JavaScript extension toolkit, Oracle does not have any products that use the trademark and presumably no planned usage. I don't think Oracle is doing anything with JavaScript. They're not a part of the committee and all that stuff, right? What is Oracle's JavaScript extension toolkit. I don't even know what this is. What is this? Empowers developers by building, by providing a modular open source toolkit based on modern JavaScript, TypeScript, CSS, and HTML. 
What even is this thing? I don't know. Oracle's Jet. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. So I think it's a component library. I, oh man, long back I interviewed someone who mentioned this to me. They had this in their resume and I was like, what is this? It's a component library written by Oracle. Only Arc <laughs> uses this, I think. I don't think anybody uses this. Yeah, see, it's a collection of open source JavaScript library, Preact knockout based architecture, along with a set of Oracle contributed JavaScript libraries. Make it efficient that consume and interact with Oracle products and services, especially Oracle cloud services. Nobody uses this, okay? So this thing is, yeah, it doesn't count as JavaScript usage, which is what which I think this is the point that these guys are making. Oracle doesn't even participate in the development of any JavaScript engines like V8, JavaScript Core, or SpiderMonkey. It seems very likely. So these are the three top JavaScript engines, by the way. V8 is the JavaScript engine that powers Chrome and Edge and all those things. There are other JavaScript, JavaScript Core and SpiderMonkey. This is the thing that runs the JavaScript code, right? So this is different, right? Oracle doesn't own that. Oracle owns the name JavaScript right? The trademark, JavaScript. Seems very likely the JavaScript trademark infringement would be unenforceable in court due to non-use. Since they don't use it, they can't really enforce it as well. But they still hold on to it. Careful law-abiding engineers bend over backwards to avoid its use, leading to confusing terms like ECMAScript. That's the reason why ECMAScript is even a name, right? They couldn't use JavaScript as a name, so they have ECMAScript. There's no JavaScript committee. There is an ECMAScript committee. ECMAScript, by the way, horrible name. They could have called it anything. They chose the worst name and they called it ECMAScript. But anyway, that's the, that's the name for JavaScript, right? Because they can't technically use the word JavaScript. I've been using the word JavaScript. I don't know if Oracle is going to come and sue me because Oracle has the trademark. Hopefully they won't. Uh, they don't come after YouTubers. Not big enough fish for them, I guess. The best value Oracle did, could derive from the trademark would be from the goodwill it receives by granting it into the public domain. It's understandable why this hasn't happened yet. It would require a very forward thinking and high level Oracle employee to propose something so intangible. Ooh, it's a bit of a burn there. Yet it's obviously in the right move to trade a worthless trademark for brand marketing and goodwill. Oracle, please release the JavaScript trademark. So I think that was the blog post and it hasn't happened. And now this is like a formal letter, right? So they have trademark abandonment, abandonment clause saying this is, you know, this is the United States court declaring what a trademark abandonment is. And in the case of JavaScript, both criteria apply. So Netscape, Sun, Oracle. So that's the transition that's happened, right? Brendan created JavaScript with Netscape, went to Sun, and now Oracle has it. Use it or lose it. Oracle has abandoned JavaScript trademark through non-use. So they're basically making a case for getting the JavaScript name, All right? I don't know, could they call it something else? I know ECMAScript is a very bad name, but maybe they could call it like J, like, okay, Microsoft happily offered up JScript, but no one, no one else wanted that, all right? So nobody wants to call it JScript. So maybe call it like JS, I don't know. Maybe just come up with the, it's hard to come up with a different name because everybody knows JavaScript will be easy to kind of like to have that momentum and use JavaScript. So this is a letter, the formal letter. This is, I think, fairly new. Let's see what the date is. I don't think it has a date. So they have a domain for it as well. They have javascript.tm as the, as the domain name for this website. And yeah, I don't know what's going to happen to JavaScript. Is Oracle going to do the right thing and release JavaScript to the public? Or are they gonna hold on to it and these people come up with a different name? Are we stuck with the name ECMAScript forever? I don't know, time will tell. If you guys feel like you, this is a good thing to do, you can sign the letter. I don't know what good it's gonna do. It's not like Oracle is sitting here and counting the signatures and then at some point they're gonna decide. I have no idea, but it's an interesting development that's happened.